Hey there dorks, Sparrows here, and today we're addressing a Pokemon pet peeve that drives fans off the wall bonkers. For the past 20 years, people have asked, why isn't Golduck a psychic type? And yes, we all know that Game Freak didn't want too many water psychics in first generation and blah 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 blah. That doesn't matter. This makes no goddamn sense. Being a latent psychic is Golduck's whole shtick. If anything, Slowbro could have remained a pure water type. And then in generation two, when they added a bunch of dark types to counteract the psychic types, given psychic type to Slow King, and everyone would be happy and no one would be none the wiser. But that rant's neither here nor there, because today on Mega Mania, we are remedying Golduck's missing typing on an episode you really don't want to miss. This Mega Evolution starts with a crackpot theory. So stick with me as I take a pit stop in the crazy town, because I really think you're gonna like where I end up. Let's start with Exhibit A, the Psyduck. This platypus thing suffers from intense headaches. When these painful migraines magnify, the Pokemon enters a heightened psychic trance and accesses some form of mystical power hidden within itself. According to Dex entries, the Psyduck forms no memories of these incidents because its consciousness enters a deep slumber. I want you to contrast this with Exhibit B, Golduck. Golduck, the evolved form of Psyduck, has no headaches. Instead, it has a mysterious gem on its forehead that glows when it swims at top speeds. Interesting. But my research shows that's about as much as Game Freak tells us when it comes to Golduck tapping into its psychic powers. Perhaps the evolutionary line isn't psychic type because they only dip their toes into their true potential. They just pull back the veil of their powers enough for us to see glimpses of psychic energy, but not enough to biologically shift them into developing the traits of a psychic type. But what if we pushed a Golduck past its limits? Speed. Golduck's dex entries talk about speed as much as they talk about psychic powers. I think this is the key. They say that it's the fastest swimming Pokemon, which to be nitpicky is not true. Uh, there are a handful of other water types that are faster, and it isn't even the fastest swift swimmer, that's Floatzel. If speed is what brings Golduck the closest to unleashing its psychic powers, then speed is what we will give it. Imagine, what would happen if it went even faster? Yes, I know I'm sounding like a Flash villain right now, but with the right mad science, a psychic Mega Golduck could be a reality. Mechanically speaking, today's Mega Mania is exploring gimmicky alternatives to item-induced Mega Evolution. Like our boy Ray Ray, Golduck won't need an item to Mega Evolve, and no, I didn't forget that Pokemon require Mega Stones because Golduck already has one. Or did you miss it? See, I told you this was a crackpot theory, but if any Pokemon deserves to have a Mega Stone included within its own design, it's Golduck, the Pokemon that has had access to a mysterious stone since Generation 1. Besides, Rayquaza's excuse is that it eats Mega Stones, I think we can give Golduck a free pass here. Instead of needing Dragon Ascent to Mega Evolve, Mega Golduck will need to have its speed increased by outside means. Choice Scarf, Tailwind, Baton Pass, Speed Boost, Swift Swim in the Rain, anything that makes Golduck's speed increase opens up the window for Mega Evolution. With speed as a catalyst, Golduck's dormant powers will erupt forth, turning the Pokemon into a Psychic Berserker. Now let's talk about some stats. First and foremost, Mega Golduck gains a speed increase that justifies the title of Fastest Water Type. 32 points go into speed to give Mega Golduck 117 base speed. Alone, Mega Golduck's base speed is still outsped by Greninja, but considering that speed modifiers trigger its evolution, it's fair to say that not much will outspeed this Mega. Mega Golduck's increased Primal Energy boosts both its Special and Physical Attack stats. Special goes up to 115 and Physical ups to 100. Seeing as Golduck can make use of a large move pool, this lends the beast nicely to both attack styles, as you will see in a moment. For balance reasons, Mega Golduck will follow in similar footsteps to Mega Alakazam, and only increase by 80 base stats. Due to this restriction, the last 10 base stats go into Special Defense. If you didn't guess by now, Mega Golduck will be a Water Psychic type, and its ability isn't something crazy that I made up, but an ability that we're already familiar with, Serene Grace. Actually, Serene Grace is more broken than anything I could come up with anyways. Thematically, I felt that Serene Grace was fitting because although I imagine Mega Golduck as a Dark Phoenix-esque monster, internally, Mega Golduck is in a state of nirvana. Also, when you take a close look at Golduck's move pool, you'll see why this is the best option for the currently PU Mon. As you can see, I've highlighted the moves that benefit from Serene Grace. There are a lot of moves it has with secondary effects that can be boosted. This thing is intimidating. I'm not giving Golduck any new moves, but if I was, I'd look into recovery and agility. Because Mega Golduck doesn't require a held item, there is a lot of room to explore with these sets. The sets that I hope become most prevalent are the Life Orb Sweeping sets. Special Sweepers can utilize Strategic Mud Bombs, and Ice Beam, Scald, and Psychic all also take advantage of Serene Grace. The Physical Sweepers can use Power Up Punch to plug up its mediocre attack stat, and they have the added benefit of Aqua Jet that allows them to challenge Sucker Punch users. Then both Zen Headbutt and Waterfall have increased 
increase flinch chances. Which brings me to the next set. This set makes me apprehensive about giving Serene Grace to Golduck, but we're maniacs of Mega Mania and Golduck deserves some Uber's love. This set is a para flinching nightmare, with Body Slam for para, King's Rock Waterfall for flinching, and Rock Climb for confusion hacks. I have a feeling that this set will undoubtedly get Mega Golduck banned, and that's a little bit of a shame. If you're not going to be running a game breaking set with Mega Golduck, you can run a setup Golduck with Calm Mind, or a rain dancing Golduck that doesn't need a teammate to set up the rain. Lastly, we have what I like to call the Alolan Golduck. This is probably the second most broken set, but due to the special nature of its Mega Evolution, it does have a slot open for a Z move if you want to use a Z move. And now, a perfectly unawkward segue into my developer's notes. Da -da 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 -da. Setting up Mega Golduck is likely the biggest disadvantage of this monster. I have a feeling Tailwind users will likely be the fan favorite method of Mega Evolution, as rain can be shut down with Sun or Cloud 9. Ideally, Golduck would be programmed so that if a Drought or a Cloud9 user switches in before it Mega Evolves, the Mega Evolution fails, but I don't really know how hard that is to code. Golduck won't de-Mega Evolve if it switches out or if Tailwind peters out, so once active, Mega Golduck will function the same as other Megas. Sucker Punch and Knock Off will hopefully deal with Golduck well enough to prevent it from dominating a tier. Brave Birding Brave Burger will also outspeed an unboosted Mega Golduck with a chance to one-hit KO. Water Absorbers, Ghost, and Dark Types should also be able to deter the Paraflinching Golduck, which if you couldn't tell, is my primary concern with this design. And before we wrap this up, I want to address another Golduck pet peeve. It's not gold. So as a special treat, here's a shiny Mega Golduck for you guys. So that's it for Mega Golduck. Let me know how you'd utilize it in the comments. What would you pair it with? How would you counter it? Or is it even too broken to exist? Should Rayquaza be the only Pokemon that can Mega Evolve without an item? Or would you like to see more alternative methods for Mega Evolution added in the future, even if just on a theoretical standpoint? This episode will be the last Mega Mania for a short period. I want to see what Sun and Moon has to offer before designing more Mons, but trust me, I've got plenty of ideas. The series also costs me a bit of money to produce, so if you want Mega Mania to continue, please, please, please hit the like button and share your favorite Megas with your friends. I love making these, I really, really do, but I have to keep my wallet in mind. That said, special thanks to my friend Mike Regan who took all that money. He helped me design all these Megas and he had the patience of putting up with me while we tweaked Mega Golduck like 50 times. He just got married, so please show his website some love. Anyways, my name is Sparrows. I'd love if you subscribed and hopefully we can find a way to keep Mega Mania alive. Take care.